Many people are wondering what's going to happen in 2022. If we look at history, it's going to be a guide for us. And I'm going to break that all down. The first thing I want to look at is the economic headwinds that are in place today. The second thing is stocks catching up what's been happening and what is going to occur in that respect. And the third thing is no growth. We look around and we could see in many aspects, there hasn't been any growth, negative growth, in fact. And we have watched this taking place at a time in which doesn't happen too often. And I will break all of that down. So let's begin. Now, I want to talk about oil. I want to look at stocks. I want to look at many other factors. And if you stay with me until the end, we are going to talk about virtual reality cows. No, I'm serious, okay? But you came here for what's going to happen in 2022, and I will give you that right away, okay? But stay for the cows. Now, looking at this, what we see today right now is that there is a quantitative tightening policy that is in place, not just from the Federal Reserve, but you look globally, okay? What's been happening? After years and years and years of money printing and interest rates going down, the reverse is starting to happen. And you see this, I've shown you Goldman Sachs before, essentially just saying that, you know, we're kind of on that decline. The amount of expansion of the quantitative easing and so on has started to come down already. Many central banks have reduced the amount of money that they print already. This has already happened, okay? So you could see when we're in that environment, what is the most likely thing to occur? What are the probabilities? We don't know what's going to happen in the future. Just like if you're putting money on a stock, just like if you're buying an ETF, just like if you're purchasing real estate, you don't necessarily know what's going to happen but there are probabilities. So what are they? Now, right now, the first thing first, markets overreact to the downside. That happens all the time, especially the most risky of assets. Feel that first. That's the first thing. The second thing is you get a rebalancing of the portfolios as a result of that. So if somebody is taking some heavy risk in one direction, they may start to bring that back into what they believe is safe. Maybe they invest in you know whatever it might be i don't want to give any financial advice but they might put their money into bonds let's say maybe they were in some sort of high risk growth type of asset they might say okay i'm gonna keep it in this sovereign debt if they think that's safe the third thing is that assets can actually move higher over a period of time and you might think well if there's chaos, why are they moving higher? It's because, okay, there is an overreaction, but then it gets to a point in which the market says, okay, well, this isn't so bad, and I'm going to see some value there, and I'll see some value there, and money still gets in, but it's not tight enough to really constrict everything yet. But eventually, in an increasing interest rate environment, things do tend to to fall. That is history playing out. And you could see this literally hundreds of times, different countries around the world, different markets. It's always seemingly the same. So that's 22. Now I'm going to unpack that here in this video. Stick with me, all right? If you appreciate the information, hit that thumbs up. Oil posts its third weekly advance as the market tightens on outages. You're looking at the output that's been altered. I can't even mention that name. Libyan production is lower. WTI futures were down, but $79 a barrel. Now that is historically quite high. We've seen it higher in the past, of course, but looking at what has happened with oil, it should give everybody a sense of you know what's happening with commodities, but also the supply and demand fundamentals of the economy. If you see it starting to increase, certainly there is that demand there. At the same time, of course, you've got shortages, you've got outages and so on. Upward momentum, oil posted its third weekly gain as the market supplies tighten. Use any excuse you want. Looking at this right now, we know how important oil is. And you look at Canadian oil. Canadian oil sends exports to Asia reach a record with a new link. I thought it was interesting because it kind of falls out of favor from time to time. However, they mention 
uh, countries like Venezuela not being able to export. And what does that do? Well, Canada loves that. When that occurs, take a look. You can see this right here. U.S. is getting more oil from Canada. Look at that. Okay. Going up uh, back in 2010, it was about two, uh, 2 million barrels a day up to at the peak 4 million so double over you know just over a 10 year period so looking at that just to give you an idea what's been happening and you got the highest ever vegetable oil the different type of oil prices risk the even faster inflation take a look the prices have gone berserk there's no doubt about that you look at the prices of many different things going higher and higher and higher. And now this is going to lead me into the next part because Goldman now expects four Fed hikes sees a faster runoff in 2022. So the um, situation here is that central banks like the Fed have to increase interest rates to slow down inflation because if inflation gets out of control, people will take to the streets. There will be problems. And because of where we are at today, understand that the valuations that we've put on, onto these different stocks, the 401ks, people's portfolio, individual portfolios, IRAs, RRSPs, supers, and so on, you see that people are more affected by what happens in the stock market. And that could be very, very painful very quickly. So I want to show you what's happening with the markets right now. I mean, you, you'll see this in a second here, just showing you the sentiment indicator. And what we're looking at here, you know, doesn't it's not a complex thing. It's just where investors are at right now, specifically right now. So we saw that things were way stretched, way stretched towards the fourth quarter of 2020. This is the time frame into the first quarter of 2021 but things started to change and it was kind of chopping around in this region here but now it's in the territory of light to extremely light positioning what does that mean it means there could be a rebound in where people are putting their money investors are putting their money at this time if you look at what's going on this is the nasdaq this is the qqq and you could see over my head right about here, I can't really point to it. Maybe I just point with this. Makes more sense. You could see that it looks like there could be a temporary bounce. There are three separate um, indicators that are looking like there could be a temporary bounce. And so we will see what happens. But this, like I said, we're talking about 22, you see what's going on where the initial reaction, the rebalancing, and then you could have growth coming after that. We will see what happens, of course, as time goes on. Markets face increasing volatility as investors grapple with how to reprice assets as the liquidity that helped drive equities higher uh, to record highs is withdrawn. The Fed needs to tread carefully in removing policy accommodation. And by the way, I do believe that we are going to get some statements that come out that basically backtrack on what they've said. They know that they spooked the markets. And they want to just walk that back a bit. They usually go two steps forward, one step back. It should not happen too fast. Otherwise, it risks a disruption to the rebound in economic growth and could lead to another taper tantrum. That's huge for obvious reasons. Okay. Then we have this, Taylor, whose monetary policy rule has been a guidepost for central banks worldwide for years, says the Fed is way behind the curve. Depending on the assumptions made, he suggested the Fed funds rate should be anywhere from 3% to 6%. And I have shown you the Taylor rule before, essentially just saying that if you want to actually squash the, in the inflation right now, interest rates need to be somewhere between 3 and 6%. But you and I, very clearly, you and I know what happens or what would happen should interest rates be anywhere near that range. I mean, come on. Are they going to be able to handle that? No, not even close. All right. So now we take a look at what's happening first with Australia, but essentially with this no growth situation. Okay. 
Australia's building boom set to fade further as we see conditions globally. I mean, the lockdowns, the restrictions of all kinds. This is just showing us annual approvals to build new homes across Australia skidded in November, and economists expect activity to cool further as we see uh, staff shortages and material shortages. So what does that do to the prices of real estate? Well, ultimately, if there's less homes being built and there's still demand for people to be living in them, it's going to push the prices up. So we see, I don't want to call it artificial, but in a sense, it is an artificial increase in the prices. Okay, that's just the way I see it. But regardless, in a nominal sense, prices could absolutely go higher. This is Australian building approvals seen on a downward spiral this year. My friends in Australia, I know you have seen what has happened in the UK, what has happened in Canada, what has happened in New Zealand, and even in the US and all around the world, in fact, where we have seen this insatiable demand for real estate, among other things, and the prices have been completely out of control. All of that controlled by very low interest rates. When that changes, so does these trends. So do these trends. Mexico auto output falls to the lowest annual level since 2014. Shortages of parts, the semiconductors, and so on. Okay. And then we have this in a strange situation. Shares of Chinese developer Shimao jump on report that it's selling all of its real estate projects. At this time, um, the last time I saw it, the shares were actually up 20%. Okay, so this is one of those developers that is actually positioned much better than Evergrande. Covered it in a previous video, much healthier. However, <laughs> you know, they got themselves in, into the same situation, all developers, in fact. But apparently, they're going to sell all of its real estate projects, both residential and commercial. Is that necessarily positive well maybe temporarily but this just shows you how messed up things are 62 need i remind you 62 trillion dollars the chinese real estate biggest asset class in the world and now you stayed until the end i want to thank you for that and you get a little bit of wild and wacky Farmer gives cows VR headsets to reduce anxiety and increase milk production. Apparently, the cooped up cows now think that they're outside in a meadow. <laughs> just looking at this, I mean, I don't know if this is what I don't know what to say about it. I just thought it was strange. I thought it was odd. And it goes in with this whole virtual reality, the metaverse. And everything connected with that all right odd to say the least look if you support the channel you got to give that a thumbs up it's right down there it's one click if you want to see the cows and the kittens and the and the potentially the puppies you got to support this channel simply by hitting that one thumbs up down below if you haven't seen this video yet you definitely want to check it out all right so just click it and i will see you there